So please give a warm welcome to Adam. Thank, thank you for joining us today. Please go ahead and share your presentation and uh, we'll get that started. All right. So I'm going to talk about uh, my personal story of uh, migrating uh, our MDM from Workspace ONE to Mosul. It's not a how-to, but it's more just a personal story, so maybe you can learn from our mistakes or uh, our victories and all that fun stuff. Um, I'm Adam Inkwitz, and I'm the IT manager at the Leo Beck Day School. Uh, you can find me uh, via email at adamandinkwitz.com or on Twitter or on Slack. Uh, I've also got my personal blog, which has maybe 10% IT content, but also cooking and other fun stuff. Um, also, all the slides are going to have an address where you can find the Google slide deck. So if you want to follow along or read the readers, uh, the presenters notes, that's all there. Um, so first, I'm going to start with a little history of what got us to needing to switch our MDM system. At first, we were using configurator to configure our two iPad carts. It was a pain in the tuchus. We had to touch every iPad. App installation took forever, and to make it as easy as possible, every iPad had to have every app, uh, and that made it just take even longer. Then I went to my first Mac and Mins in 2014, and I met a lovely guy who showed me AirWatch, and he was using it to manage his school's iPads. I made some room in the school budget, and everything was so much better. We could manage everything without having to connect a device physically, and it worked without a problem. There we go. Um, our Macs, however, were being imaged in an old fashioned way. We were using Deploy Studio, and we had Deploy Studio wipe our Macs, and then install the operating system, then it would install Monkey, and then it would configure Monkey. Uh, at that point, the computer would boot and Monkey would do everything else. A year later, I was seeing the trend was moving away from um, away from that and more towards MDM, and I decided to change our deployment method. Um, well, we were we decided that since we we're already using AirWatch, we would continue using AirWatch. Though at this point, I think it was Workspace One. And but I don't know exactly when they retitled it, but let's say from now on, let's call it Workspace One. Um, the computer would boot. It would check in with the device enrollment on Apple servers. It would uh, Workspace One would then install Monkey and configure Monkey, and then Monkey would take over. It would install all the apps. It would install any profiles, and Monkey would also in run any scripts that needed to be run. And this worked great for a short period of time until profiles stopped getting pushed to the iPads. Wiping them didn't help. Fiddling with Workspace ONE didn't help. VMware's tech support didn't help. And then not just profiles stopped getting pushed, but also VPP apps stopped getting installed. And I grew really tired of those problems. Uh, a friend of mine got a new job and he needed to manage his Macs. And we looked at a few options and he settled on Mosul. And while we were playing with it, I fell in love with it. It just seemed like a great product, and even better, it was free for one platform if you're in education. Um, so I decided that summer, which was July 2019, I would migrate my MDM uh, for iPads only. Seeing as we wipe iPads every summer, it was super easy. I would transfer them in Apple School Manager. I'd manually copy the settings from uh, Workspace ONE over into Mosul. Then I would wipe the device and Boom, we were done. It worked so well. And that summer, we also had a new staff member join our team. So hi, Audrey. Uh, they were new to the whole Mac admin thing, but they were able to manage the iPad fleet without breaking a sweat. And they were still pretty green at it, and they did an amazing job. So things were going along smooth. We had our uh, iPads in, um, in, work, in Mosul and our Macs in Workspace ONE. But then we, the scope of Workspace ONE seemed to explode. So we had to install PPP profiles through um, Workspace ONE and um, the Kext allow list profiles uh, as well. 
Um, I assumed that it was working quick correctly because I would test it out. It worked. I would push it out and I would check a few samples and it would work correctly. I would later find out I was completely wrong about that. Um, then uh, a teacher couldn't log into a computer, so I went to her class and a student told me he could hack the computer. Uh, so I said, sure, go ahead, show me how you can hack the computer. And he rebooted into recovery utility. He went into the terminal. He typed reset password and that's when I stopped him. I told him that he was right. He can totally do it, but he shouldn't without permission from me. He was actually pretty good and was willing to listen to that. Um, so after fixing the teacher's actual problem, I went to my desk and went to the Workspace ONE console and I put a firmware password onto all the devices. But that's when I noticed that it wasn't working and it was seemed to be hit or miss and I couldn't figure out a pattern of why some devices were getting that firmware password and others weren't. And then I saw that the PPPC profiles weren't being sent out either. Workspace ONE just wasn't doing the job I needed it to do. I called their support and they were unable to help me. Um, I couldn't even get someone who seemed to know anything about Macs, and that was a huge problem to me. So I figured we would navigate with that problem until our contract ran out this summer and now July 2020, um, and that's the time when we would move to Mosul for Macs and iPads. But I don't know if any of you remember March 2020, Seems like a long time ago now, so I'll forgive you if you forget, but a pandemic happened. And after school on a Thursday before March break started, the Ontario government announced that schools would not reopen when March break ends. So we're a private school um, and we don't have March break. We're a Jewish day school, so we have Passover break. This year, Passover break was about three weeks after the public schools had their March break. So we were supposed to be in school that next week. That was March break for everyone else. So the announcement was made on a Thursday. Friday, we were closed for parent-teacher conferences, and those went ahead of schedule with some extra distancing and some more hand sanitizer. And then that weekend, our Dean of Academic Development worked hard to create an online platform. And on Monday, the teachers were trained on it in a PD session, and on Tuesday, online classes began. And things seemed to go okay. We made a couple of bad steps, and we learned from them and corrected, and. Things went really good for the most part. It wasn't bad for a weekend's notice. And then Apple decided to release 10.14.6 supplemental update. And suddenly Zoom didn't work. The app was freezing on a lot of our clients and it was frustrating. Um, I tested updating the computers to, to updating a computer to 10.15.4 and Zoom began working as expected. I again tried it on a teacher computer and though it got Zoom working when I finally got it running, I did run into some problems. For one thing, Zoom's PPPC settings weren't being pushed out to the client max, so that I couldn't do remote support and be able to get that done. So now I had to make a decision and I guess we're going to Mosul right away during a pandemic while everyone's working from home and not in the building. I guess. So I called up my SE at Apple and asked him about this migration and how he would suggest doing it. And his response was wipe the device. I then asked some others and they said wipe the device, but I wasn't going to wipe the device. A lot of our teachers refused to put their files in Google Drive and it seemed foolish to me to try to do that and expect no backlash from the end user. So how is I going to migrate them? Well, I had their computers at their home and I was connecting via Zoom, but I couldn't control their computer via Zoom. They were standard users who couldn't allow me to control their computer. Well, that's going to provide some issues. So I ran some tests and the first, one of the first things I noticed on our iMacs in our lab was that sure it went real fast with a device in our building downloading Catalina, but it was a bit slow if anything was outside of our network and downloading over the internet. So I realized that sending out the full Catalina installer through our monkey repo wasn't going to do. So I decided to use monkey and install the Catalina stub instead. It's a much smaller file for download and then the client machines would download the actual OS 
from Apple servers instead, which are much bigger than a tiny schools. I then sent out an invite to all staff to schedule a one on one hour block with either myself or Audrey to do the update. And uh, we got quite a good reply from our staff. Um, but they still had the issue of not having permissions. So I remembered a talk that Rich Treden had done about SAP's app called Privileges. What it does is elevate the privileges of the user from a standard user to an admin user. They open the app, they're admin, they close it. Sorry, they open it again, and then they're standard users. Well, if I can install that, I can have the teachers elevate their privileges, get the access they need. So the night before everyone's, uh, the night before a specific person's appointment, I would put privileges into their devices, managed installs um, manifest uh, in Monkey. And so that I would have uh, privileges ready to go right when we connected. Uh, and again, the night before I went into Apple School Manager and I moved the device by its serial number from, Mo uh, from Workspace ONE into Mozilla. And then also the night before, I would go into Workspace ONE and tell the app to, uh, tell it to delete the device. So the next morning, the user and the tech would then start a Zoom meeting and the user would share their screen. We would ask for control and Mac OS would pop up a notification saying you have to approve this and the user would open their system preferences, but they wouldn't be able to unlock that system pane. We verbally direct them to the applications folder and launch privileges. And then at that point, I would pretend that I'm doing something magical in the background, you know, clickety, clickety, clickety. Yeah, I got to go and do and give you those permissions. All right, you got those permissions. Now go ahead and check off the box and, or authenticate with your username and password and check off the box for Zoom. Once I did that, I had control and I could then go and run privileges again to revoke their privileges and I would move the program from the manage on into the manage uninstall section for the devices monkey manifest but I wouldn't run monkey yet first I needed to check to make sure that the profiles from workspace one were removed and if so I was ready to roll I would point the browser to Mosul's enrollment page and install the profile by double clicking I would do some housekeeping in Mosul to make sure that it's assigned to the right user. I would uninstall privileges by running Monkey or Manage Software Center, and then they're ready for the upgrade to Catalina. So at that point, I would run the Catalina stub. I would authenticate as the admin user, and I would let it run for the user and ask them to contact me if they ran into any problems during the install. Hooray, we're done, right? We must be done, come on. Please be done. No, we're not done. So most of it worked. Many of the devices enrolled in Mosul and it was amazing to watch them come in, but a small percentage were weird. They refused to unenroll from Workspace ONE and I still don't know why. And it seemed that a lot of them happened within the first two days of this process. Um, sometimes I would restart the device and it gave the computer the kick in the pants to unenroll and that was fine. Sometimes I would install the Workspace ONE agent and that did it. Sometimes I just had to reconnect with the person the next day and suddenly it was working. I have no idea what caused it. And since it was all happening at the very beginning, I thought this project can't actually work. So I called up Workspace ONE's, uh, sorry, VMware's support. 24 hours later, I got someone assigned to the ticket who didn't know anything about Max, didn't seem to care to help, and would always wait 24 hours to between an email. So she would ask, have you tried this? And I'd say, yeah. Then 24 hours later, can you try this again? Well, no, that didn't work this time. And another 24 hours later, I get a response with, why not try this instead? And that was kind of frustrating. Um, I was told by many people in the Slack community to not use delete device and instead use enterprise wipe. Apparently, this keeps the device in Workspace ONE's catalog, uh, but it, it removes anything MDM related from the device. I was kind of reluctant to use it because it had the word wipe in it. I don't think it made much of a difference because uh, it seemed to work with just the same frequency, 
Um, the only difference I could find was that Workspace ONE refused to help me when I deleted a device because it was no longer in their database. They couldn't find it. But using Enterprise Wipe, they were slightly more willing to help. I wouldn't say willing to help, but slightly more. So then comes the remaining 20%. I just couldn't get those to lose their allegiance to Workspace ONE. And I didn't want to do this, but I couldn't see any other options. So I guess we're disabling SIP. For those who don't know, system integrity protection is a newish feature in Mac OS that Apple implemented. It's to better secure Mac OS and it prevents you from deleting the profiles database. Rightfully so. I want to delete the profiles database unless I really had to. So let's do what we have to. I would connect with the user over the phone. Um, we would have them restart the computer while holding down Command R. I would have them click on utilities and click in terminal. I then text them CSR util disables so that they could see it and I didn't have to explain CSR util space disable D I S A B L E. Um, once they had typed that and they got the right response, I, they would restart the computer. We would connect via Zoom. I would take control and I would delete the configurations profiles database. I would also delete the APSD keychain and I would reboot the computer. We would then connect again via Zoom. I would take control again. I'd go into system preferences and make sure there are no profiles. At this point, do I enroll in Mosul or do I enable SIP? Well, I knew that Mosul was going to send out a firmware password uh, once they were enrolled. So I needed to dis to re-enable SIP first. So I had the user reboot the computer holding down Command R once again, go to Utilities Terminal, and type in CSR Util Enable. They would restart the computer. We would connect via Zoom, and I would enroll them in, Zoom, in, in Mosul. This worked pretty well, except for one thing. It's a weird thing that I don't know why it happens, but the profile pane stops showing up in System Preferences once you've disabled the uh, once you've deleted the configuration profiles database it wasn't a major issue but it was slightly annoying and for the rest of the machine's life until it's retired i will just have to um, use the command line interface to find out what profiles are installed um, so that did nearly everyone there were a few who still had sip disabled uh, sorry, there were a few who I couldn't disable SIP because Workspace, Work, Workspace ONE had already successfully put in a firmware password on the device. Um, they're currently still, in, still enrolled in Workspace ONE until we can see them in person in September. If, you know, things go according to plan and Ontario's numbers keep going down, then we'll be able to do it manually. So what did I learn over that time? One was to double check that things are working. Make sure your, your profiles are being deployed properly by your MDM. Maybe set up some reports, maybe use monkey report to show, uh, show profiles and make sure the right profiles are installed. Um, also, before you sign up for a service, make sure that their help desk is going to suit your needs. Another thing is to be agile and don't be afraid to change plans. So if you told your users one thing, They'll understand if you send out a follow-up saying something else, as long as you explain it to them. And finally, in the immortal words of Douglas Adams, don't panic. So I do want to thank a few people. So the Toronto Channel was an amazing sounding board and uh, they were fantastic people. And especially I've got to thank the ones who I've gotten to know in person, thanks to the MacBrained YYZ uh, meetings. Uh, such an amazing group of people, and it's great to have a good network to help you out. Uh, amongst those, David gets a lot of credit for pointing me to the Catalina and Stub installer, and he even had one package ready to go that I could just throw right into um, throw right into Monkey and blast that out. I also want to thank my friend Graham, who was first experimenting with Mosul, and I got to play with it with. I also want to thank Rich because I was he was kind enough to answer some questions for me about privileges when he could really have easily just told me to read the manual um, and also i want to thank robert because he gave a second look at this presentation and gave some fantastic feedback but most importantly i have to thank audrey 
because they're so amazing and I'm so happy to have them on my team and they're a fantastic resource and helped with this pro this project so much. And that's it. So if anyone has any questions, Fantastic presentation, Adam. Thank you. <clears throat> um, well, I don't see any questions quite yet, but we usually uh, can't give it a couple minutes, and once in a while there'll be something that pops in. Um, it seems the video feed today is is quite horrible. Um, so, luckily for all of you, you don't have to look at my face in too clear uh, fashion. Um, okay, so here we do have a question. Did you use the on-prem or cloud version of AirWatch WS1? We were using the uh, cloud version. OK, great. Cool. Cloud, yeah, the cloud version seems to be the way to go these days, huh? Sadly, it didn't seem to help. <laughs> That's too bad. OK. Um, a comment here. Great story. Thanks for sharing. I'll second that as well. Really Thank appreciate the, the the background there that you've gone through. Um, Hopefully, yeah. no I've, one I've else has the pains. Right. <laughs> right. I've been lucky enough to ha not have to deal with that yet, uh, but it's always something that's in the back of my mind. <laughs> Uh, another thanks for sharing your MDM experiences. Everyone is awesome when they are part of a team. You missed the part about Rusty being awesome. I did. I skipped the Rusty is awesome because I didn't want to turn beet red, but thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, Matt <laughs> and Adam. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, I'm also a Mosul convert this year. Congrats. How many iPads do you have in Mosul now? I think it's just shy of a hundred. Um, we've got uh, about five iPads in every class from our JK class all the way up to our grade four classes. Um, so everywhere in there, um, we've got iPads. And a follow up how, about how many Macs? Um, our Macs are, I think, a bit fewer because those are mostly staff other than our one computer lab. And I think we're about 70, no, we're more than that. We're about 125 Macs. Okay. Um, another kind of question, comment more. Uh, we have problems removing the MDM cert on machines that were manually enrolled versus automated. The MDM cert sticking around seemed to keep it in the MDM where we can't remove it. That sounds about right because um, when one of the things I did notice was that a lot of the uh, enrollment profiles were showing as unverified. Um, even devices that were enrolled only a few months prior. And it was kind of strange and I didn't quite understand why, though we were enrolling all of our Macs exclusively through DEP. Okay. How afraid of changing MDM vendors should people be based on your experience? And if I can add a follow up to that, what do you, th how do you think it would have been different without the COVID? Um, so, I think people should not be afraid of changing MDM vendors. I think they should be aware that it's going to be a huge project and something that might take a while to do. Um, and it shouldn't be rushed into, which is what we had to do. And I think that was the big thing was because we were COVID and um, because our devices stopped working properly to do the online classes as we wanted them to, um that's what made it such a huge problem um what i would do though i just would make sure that their support is something that you are comfortable with um i know not everyone needs uh very fast uh, support 
but I do think that for an MDM, especially an MDM, because it's such a key, sto key part of the Macamin toolbox, I would be afraid of any support that does require 24 hours before any response. You're muted, Rusty. Thank you. Um, how has your support been with Mosul since changing? Um, I recently went in to take a look at my tickets. Um, they don't have phone support, which I would kind of like, though, from what our sales rep told us, uh, if I wanted to, I could create submit an email ticket with please call me back at and include my phone number. Um, and they would do that. I haven't needed to do that, fortunately. I looked at my tickets and all of them had, the longest reply was 30 minutes and the average was about five minutes before I got a reply from them. And they always had an, uh, an actual answer. Fantastic. Um, does Mosul support any Windows devices or anything other than Apple devices? Uh, no, they don't support any Windows devices. Our Windows devices are very small uh, of a deployment. We've got two. Yeah, we're we're down to two now. Uh, one person in finance, one person in development. And uh, as such, we are not doing much with the management of the Windows machines. Um, so it's not too big of a deal for us. You're muted again. Hey, thanks. Uh, Mosul Sales has a few nice scripts to help migrate from one MDM to another. Uh, works uh, whether the machine was manually enrolled in MDM or automatically. That's a comment. We have from Jesse. Um, another comment, thanks for sharing. Seems you're lucky uh, to have friendly users, as it seems users could have opted out of MDM by not re enrolling when the device was removed from AirWatch. Question? Uh, yeah, they could have, but uh, so I sent out an email to all staff asking them to schedule an appointment. I got responses and pretty immediately from about 90% of people. Um, and that was really good. Um, one of the things is they don't know what MDM is because it's not part of their job. So um, I just told them that we needed to migrate to a management system and they were pretty open. There were a few who didn't respond to my email. I had to send out three emails to a couple people. Um, but then he just said that uh, he doesn't check his emails very much. Uh, so that was not him trying to run away. And also I'd spoken to our principal and she had told me that if she needed me, she would strong arm some people. Okay. Uh, what kind of support did you receive from Mosul getting started outside of support? Um, did you have to pay any extra for additional training or hands-on support? I don't know if they'll want me to say this, but who cares? Because pff, uh, we haven't paid a cent yet. Um, our contract started at the beginning of July, um, and we might have sent a check. I don't know. I'm not in finance. Um, but um, they were kind enough because we ran into that problem that they gave us for free from... Uh, March through to the end of June uh, because we were agreeing to sign up for the full year for 2020-2021 um, school year. Um, so all that we're paying for is the per, de per device licenses and the um, um, and the Google Apps auth um, authentication integration that um, that we haven't done yet. Uh, you're muted again. <laughs> okay. Uh, fantastic. Um, was your Workspace ONE environment on-prem or in the cloud? I think you said that was on the cloud. Yep, it was on the cloud. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Let's see. No other questions at the moment. Awesome. Okay. Um, 
Well, we'll give it a, we'll give it a minute, but um, I think if there are no other questions, then what we'll do is we'll have everyone move uh, any lingering questions into perhaps, a, uh, I believe there might be a Mosul channel on the Mac admin Slack or a PSU Mac channel. Uh, those other locations for support. Um, thank you, Adam, again for your presentation today.